What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to Kid Tosh. Today, we're going to be talking about Kevin Love's ascendance back into stardom in the NBA. But before we do that, and before I get into my regular stuff, I just want to say that um, it's, you know, been a really sad day. Craig Sager, as many of you may know, as one of the most popular sideline NBA sideline reporters of all time, a guy that really stood for so much in terms of character and and just loving what he does and being in such a tough position you know with his condition if you don't know about Craig Sager he passed away today at age 65 right after I believe it was it was maybe yesterday the day before but he was just inducted into I think it was the sports broadcasting hall of fame or something like that um but just you know such a great person leaving uh the basketball and NBA and just more than that um you know, our, our world is, it's a very sad thing and may he rest in peace. Now, let me get into the video. Um, if you enjoy the video, please remember to like it up, subscribe if you're new, comment an idea, what video you want to see from me. We're gonna be talking about Kevin Love. Um, Kevin Love has had himself a season to remember and season reminiscent of seasons he's had in the past where we called him the best power forward in the league even the best offensive player in the league maybe maybe not that far but he was a great offensive threat for the minnesota timberwolves for years um, back in the beginning of his career and he's also a guy that could really be considered a candidate for the most improved player award and he's also a guy that's having one of the quietest breakout years or not breakout years but quietest amazing years that we've seen from a player i mean i don't hear anyone really talking about kevin love that much you know we're obsessed with the jump to stardom of guys like Giannis, who have, who's played so much better this season. You know, other players like James Harden, who has been a revelation this year. Russell Westbrook averaging the triple-double. Um, you know, there's a lot of players that have been putting up great numbers. The scoring outputs from star players across the league has been have been absolutely tremendous. I mean, we have so many guys averaging 20-plus points, much more than we've seen. A lot of guys averaging 25-plus, like... It's been crazy the amount of scores that we have in this league. No one's really keeping an eye on Kevin Love. And it's funny because, you know, the Cleveland team's doing good. And the first two years in Cleveland, we'd, we would always hear about what's going on with Kevin Love. Why, why isn't he playing like he did in Minnesota? Because, as I alluded to before, he was an incredible player in Minnesota. He had a year where he averaged 15 rebounds. He had a year after that where he averaged 26 points and 13 rebounds. He had really good three-point shooting numbers, and he was pretty efficient from the field throughout Minnesota as well. Never known for his defensive outputs or really performances, but the guy was a great player, and in his last season in Minnesota, he averaged 26.1 points, 12.5 rebounds, and 4.4 assists, shooting 46% from the field and 38 from the three-point line, and taking two or making two and a half threes per game. I mean, that's this is a guy that's putting up a lot of threes and hitting the threes and Cleveland acquires him. They want to make a championship team. Hint or, you know, spoiler alert, they made a championship team. They Yes, they won 15-16. But Kevin Love averaged eight points in the NBA Finals in 2016. And it's not something that you expect because you expected. I mean, there were a lot of people that thought when Kevin Love came over that he would be the second best guy on that team, that he would be better than Kyrie Irving, more valuable, more called upon, a guy that was going to maybe score more, contribute more, stuff like that. A lot of people thought that Kevin Love was the number two, but you know, we would shortly find out that it was Kyrie Irving that was going to take that immediate sidekick role to LeBron James. And it sucks that we have to call Kyrie Irving a sidekick, but basically anybody playing with LeBron James is a sidekick. And you know it because that team doesn't really win when LeBron's not playing ever. They historically haven't won without LeBron, but that's a whole nother topic. We're talking about Kevin Love. Kevin Love last year averaged 16 points, 10 rebounds, two assists, 0.5 blocks. He shot 42% from the field and 36% from the three-point line. Now, this would be considered, you know, going from when he was averaging 26 points, 13 rebounds, and his shooting percentage is dropping off. He was taking six less shots per game last year than he was taking in his last year in Minnesota, and his field goal percentage dropped off, and I'm sure he was taking better shots, more open looks. I think it's simply because he didn't really know how to play that third role. I mean, he'd always been that guy in Minnesota. He'd always been the go-to guy, the number one guy. You run your offense through him. I mean, that's really what he was, 
And now in Cleveland, you know, we saw, hey, maybe this wasn't such a good idea. Kevin Love doesn't really play enough defense. He's not being as effective as an offense player, as offensive player as he should be if he wants to succeed and we want to succeed in this system. And yeah, I mean, he actually was benched during the playoffs, certain times, you know, games where he would come off the bench. And it was very interesting. Maybe it was because he was coming back from his injury, but, you know, it didn't last that long. But that's really how serious this got. Kevin Love's drop-off. What's going on with Kevin Love? Well, it start, it's like, it's been a whole new, it's like a rebirth of Kevin Love. 22 points, 10.4 rebounds, 1.7 assists, and he's been great. 46.4% from the field. That's the second highest of his career, and he's shooting 41% from the three-point line, also the second highest of his career. And averaging 10.4 rebounds, that's higher than he averaged in his first two years in Cleveland. And the 22 points, he averaged 16 points in each of his first two years in Cleveland. Now he's all the way up to 22. He's been fantastic, and they're just going to him more. I mean, Tyron Lue is really looking to get him involved early. You saw that 34-point first quarter when he went ridiculous on the Portland Trail Blazers in Cleveland a few weeks ago. We know this guy can shoot the ball, but he's been shooting the ball much better this year than he has in years past. And also, I just think that he's more involved. I mean, I think that he's really feeling himself, that they're really going to him as a force. They're really just initiating him, I guess I would say. I mean, getting him started early in the game and he's in it, clicking throughout the game. And well, no surprise, Cleveland has the number one seat. But Kevin Love deserves some all-star consideration for sure. 22 and 10 great field goal and three-point percentages he's helping his team win and they're the first seed he's got to be in the game i don't care what anyone else in the east is doing i know we've got some guys going off this year but he's got to be in the eastern conference for the all-star game or on that squad i don't think he'll he's a starter um but i do think that he's definitely worthy of a reserve spot in that squad and also i think that he needs to be considered for the most improved player award i mean i know that there are other guys that have taken jumps in their game guys that have gotten a lot better and increased their outputs and efficiencies and whatnot um but kevin loves is just he's gotten better in so many areas and it's it's funny because he was better than that i mean it's not like he's never been this good before we've seen a kevin love this good but i think that this might be the best version of kevin love we've seen and i'll say that for a few reasons yes his stats aren't as inflated but he's also not getting the ball nearly as much as usage rate is down he's not the first option in cleveland but he's still putting up these amazing numbers so i think that you know if you factor in the fact that he's not the number one guy that his usage rate isn't as high i think if, you know that was true for the self that he was in minnesota that he probably still wouldn't be putting up those type of numbers also he's playing way less minutes he's playing 32 minutes per game in kevin love season where he averaged 26 points and 13 rebounds and 11 12 he averaged 39 minutes per game i mean that's way more and if you average that out to 39 minutes what he's averaging now he's probably putting up something around 25 26 points 12 13 rebounds very similar numbers and it's on a team again where his usage rate is lower and he's just not the number one guy i don't i shouldn't have to say that multiple times but i want to get my point across this is the best kevin love that we've seen this is minnesota kevin love for sure i mean he's playing an extremely high level along with great players and his performances have been great he's putting up great numbers he's doing it all the team's winning and you know they took a night off it against memphis last night and that was kind of lame honestly but it doesn't change the fact that you know with him in the lineup they're still better because they dropped a game without him so what you know they're they're still the first seed and they're going to be there in the playoffs so it doesn't really matter but yeah kevin love most improved player taking a big jump from last season i i, I could definitely see it i think he's been great underrated no one's talking about him y'all should start talking about him because especially you guys that are ca so-called Cavs fans i mean i know some of you are real but man you gotta be you gotta be appreciating what this guy's doing it's not all about lebron and cleveland i mean he's definitely that number one force and he's definitely controlling it all but hey kevin love has been doing his job he's the real deal and i think that he doesn't get enough appreciation as of right now that's gonna do it for this video i hope you all enjoyed again rest in peace craig sager terrible thing fuck cancer um you know it's it's rough but yeah, I, it's it's just a, a loss that we will never forget. And um, yeah, I'm out. Thanks for watching, y'all. Peace.